Okay, hello guys, welcome to part two of the Skate Roller Modeling Series in Blender. And first of all, I would like to kind of apologize because in the first part you couldn't see what I was doing. So for the second part, I just enabled the screencast viewer so you can see what I'm doing now in the bottom right corner of the screen. So, okay, let's get started again. Okay, so here we are. In the first part, we modeled the whole thing that goes beneath the shoe. We modeled the sole, the wheels and the trucks and the whole things, the stopper. And so in this video, we're going to add the shoe itself. For this, we're going to add a plane. And we're going to start with this rainbow swirl. We're going to rotate it, place it where it belongs and extrude it so that it matches up with the design in the from the reference images. Okay, like I said in the first video, I when extruding, um, I try to line up one of the edges uh, so that I just have to realign the, uh, the second edge. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to match the curve as close as possible, extrude it downwards and extrude it far enough that it um, yeah, melts into the sole. And next we're going to simply press Ctrl R, subdivide it two times and just try to align the edges we just added with the rainbow so that we have um, one ring for each color. Mark one of the edges for one of the colors and press Ctrl R to subdivide it, press Ctrl B to bevel and then click Ctrl R to subdivide it and to add another loop into the bevel. With the loop that you just added, we're going to set it in a little bit to create these, um, these kind of seams where it is. And next we're going to align the whole thing with the shoe. So what we're going to align it is just um, grab it and bring it to approximately where, this, where it's supposed to be. And next we're going to turn on proportional editing. You can see it in the middle on, on the middle top part of your screen. What it does, it allows you to move around more than one vertex at a time. And you can change the, uh, yeah, the radius of the impact with your mouse wheel. Just um, mark one vertex, um, press G to move it, and then you can scroll your mouse wheel up and down to um, increase or decrease the influenced area. And this is one of the things that I think you have to try to really understand, but I hope you can figure it out. Okay, I'm switching back and forth from the side view, and we're just going, going to align it from all sides. We're going to match up the side view again, which we did earlier, but it's kind of warped. But no big problem, just align it again. Next, we're going to duplicate the whole thing. Press S minus one to um, yeah, kind of mirror it. And yeah, we're going to align the whole thing on the other side again. I was kind of winging it here because I didn't have a reference from the other side, but I just assumed that it would look uh, maybe kind of the same. So we're gonna just move it where I think that it will make sense. And yeah, I accidentally duplicated it two times, so just delete the second duplication. Okay, next we're going to do the same thing with these little um, rainbow um, all the way up, up, up at the top. And what I would like to do, um, just when I'm modeling, just take my time and really organize all the, all the different objects in different collections. That's what I'm doing here. I have one I have one collection for all the reference images, one for the skate itself and one for the base we made in the first video, just to keep it a little more cleaned up. And what I also like to do is, I'm not doing it every time, but 
I really like to give all the objects distinct names that I can um, distinguish them and I really know what's going on where and it makes your life a little easier. Okay, once again, extrude it a few times <coughs> and just try to align it as close as possible. Um, change into the top view and move it closely to where it belongs. Enable proportional editing once again and just move it around. And then duplicate it with Shift D and that it looks mirrored. And to merge the two parts, you have to do this by vertex by vertex. So first mark the upper two vertices, vertices um, press M to merge and then choose in the middle. And then do the same thing for the, uh, for the under two vertices. And that's the reason why I like to wait before I'm subdividing stuff because now I just had to do it this whole thing two times and if you had subdivided it before, you had to do it, uh, for example, here four times. If you're stuck like me with this situation here, um, just mark the whole thing after you've merged the two sides, but you still see a seam in the middle, just press Alt, just press Alt N and choose recalculate outside to recalculate the normals so they so that they the faces are pointing into the same direction. Okay, next I'm going to add these uh, this little um, I don't know what it's called, the back strap, I guess. It's just another plane. I'm going to extrude it and subdivide it to match the overall shape. Move it back to its position and rotate it a little to match the curve that it has. I also like to give it a little solidify modifier like I did with the bottom parts to just make it a little easier to see in the side view what we're doing now. It's always easier when you have a little thickness instead of just yeah, one line of vertices. Okay, once again I subdivided it and I'm going to try to align the edges as close as possible and yeah. Okay, there's a thing I didn't do before and that is adding a solidify modifier to the um, to the lower rainbow part because as you can see in the reference um, the rainbow part is sitting on top of the, the main shoe so that when we are going to add the main shoe, which we're doing now, um, lining it up is just going a little easier because um, you don't have to line it up 100% exactly 
and you can just wing it a little more. So what I'm going to do here is try to achieve the side view of the shoe. I'm going to bring it up to its um, approximate position and align it and give it a nice little curve of the toe. I'm going to add a little more saw, going to add some more subdivisions and extrude it even further. Okay, here I'm just extruding it as far as it goes back and extrude it downwards to fill up this uh, missing space. Once again, um, the proportional editing is your friend. Uh, I think it really comes in handy for uh, moving large parts like, like I'm doing here. Increase or decrease the area of the influence with your mouse wheel. Okay, once again, we are trying to build the shoe from the bottom up and yeah, we're going to move step by step. Next, we're going to bring it all the way up and you really have to change between the side and the top view to get the curve of the, at the toe tips correctly, but it's just some tweaking of the uh, vertices and you're fine to go. Okay, what I like to do is um, And this is the part where we have to um, kind of model the curvature of the shoe, which is a little tricky, but um, yeah, just switch your view very often and check from all sides and you're fine to go. What you can also do, what I completely forgot here, is you can split your view and so that you can have, um, for example, the top view on one side and the front or front or top view on the other half of your screen. I think it makes your it makes this process a little easier but yeah hmm. learn from my mistakes. Next we are going to do the same thing in the front as we did in the back. Merge the vertices and we had to recalculate the normals again. For this just press Alt N and choose either from the outside or from the inside. It really doesn't matter. Just pick one and if one doesn't work just choose the other one. Okay, after we've duplicated the shoe, we have to align the second we have to align the second side too. So we are uh, since we modeled the upper rainbow part, we have to bring the shoe that it matches it from the inside. Okay, since um, I moved the first side in way too much and it's it's way too slim on the top on the top, I have to move it out uh, now. But first let's fill up the missing edges on the back side. For this we're going to hide this little um, back thing, just mark your vertices and press F to fill them in. And what I like to do once again is add a solidify modifier so that you can give it, give it a nice little thickness. Yeah, move it around. Just that it matches up. And I'm going to speed this part a little up because it's just tweaking over and over again. Okay, but for now it looks really good. Okay, next we're going to add another plane to fill in the, uh, I don't know what it's called in English, in, in German it's called the tongue. Uh, add a plane, extrude it, and what I like to do here is um, rotate my viewpoint so that I'm extruding it upward. Then next we're going to subdivide it once again, move the inner subdivisions out a little to give it a nice curve, and then it's just aligning once again. I'm going to speed this part up again.
Okay, once we're done, we are going to add the eyelets. Uh, for this, we're going to add a cylinder. I just decided on 12 subdivisions are enough. And yeah, I'm going to shift them around a little bit to um, so that I have this larger one. I'm going to extrude it and <coughs> give it, oh, once again, you guessed it, a little solidify modifier. And I accidentally, accidentally deleted one of the faces. I'm going to press F to fill it in back in. And next we're going to move it where it belongs. Uh, for this, it's really it really comes in handy to um, align it with the X-ray modifier with the X-ray view on. Okay, and there we have it for eyelets. And next, we're going to uh, model the under eyelets where the laces are going through. Okay, for this, we're going to add in a torus. I decided that it isn't that because it's such because it is such a small detail, it doesn't have to be. Um, really high resolution uh, and really few polygons should be enough for this one so once again we're going to, into the x-ray mode mark all of them and duplicate them to bring it to bring them over to the other side this part is a little tricky because you have to switch back and forth from x-ray mode uh, mark it mark one of the eyelets rotate it so that it's aligned and go back into extra mode and align the next one. So I'm going to speed this part up once again. But depending on how much detail you want to have your finished um, shoe to have, you can just skip over this part and, and just add the laces on top of the shoe you just did. I really like to give it some more detail, so that's what I'm doing here. So I think this is really worth the effort. Okay, in the top view it looked a little crooked, so I just... And you really want to check it from all the views, from the side, from the back, from the top. So yeah, looks good to me. And we go. We are moving on to the laces. For this we are going to add a circle curve and a path curve. And we are going to mark the path curve and on the geometry click on object and on pick your circle curve as the object. Um, what's What's happening is that your curve will look like a circle. Okay, so when you are going to deform the circle, which you can do in edit mode, um, your path curve will also, for example, if you flatten the circle, your path curve will also get flattened because the geometry is the same as you're doing with the circle curve. Don't delete the circle curve because we're going to need it. Um, but you can hide it in the viewport and you can hide it from rendering because we just need it, but it doesn't have to be visible. Okay, I'm once again speeding up this part because this is just aligning and tweaking the whole thing to make it look good. Yeah, for this part, I really want to make sure that um, the that the curve is floating above, is kind of floating above the shoe, but it's, it's sitting snugly on top of the shoe and it's not floating above and it's not going to glitch into the shoe. So this is what I'm trying to achieve here. And the tricky thing with curves is that to rotate them you you can't press R because it won't work. You have to twist them which you can achieve with pressing shift T. I don't really know who decided on this because uh, it would be way simpler to just rotate it but um, it's just a different name for curves. But you have to be aware of that. Okay, once you're happy with the result, we are done with this video. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and maybe like this video and comment down below what you liked, what you didn't like. To hopefully see you later on. Have a nice day. Bye.